Thanks again, everybody, for listening to Diffuse Congruence. This is Zucky, and I'm here with Pervez. Hey, welcome, listeners. Good to be with you again, Zucky. Yeah, so we've started a new endeavor here uh, to enhance the experience that people have listening to Diffuse Congruence. And why don't you give our audience the heads up on that? Yeah, we're really excited about this. We have just launched our Patreon page. So you have a new destination or URL that you can find the latest and greatest about Diffuse Congruence. And in addition to that, you have now the opportunity to participate by not only listening and commenting and being a part of a community of people that do check out the show, but also you get the opportunity to now support the show financially. If you go to patreon.com slash diffuse congruence, you can find out more about how you can be a part of that endeavor. What we really want is an opportunity to increase not just uh, the quantity of output that we are putting out, but also the quality of output that we're putting out. So we're hoping that you out there in the world will be able to help us out by uh, allowing us to upgrade our equipment and, as necessary, upgrade our production capability and really make this show the best it can be for all of you out there. You know, I know, Zucky, when you and I started out and, you know, when when we put our brains together to kind of come up with the idea of the podcast and what we wanted it to be, you and I, you know, realized that if we were going to be preserving and capturing the stories uh, of the likes of Dr. Omar Farouk Abdullah or Osama Kanan or Imam Zaid Shakir or, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. But if we're if we're capturing their stories, we want to do it in the best form using the best technology available to us. And so, you know, we're only able to do that so much with on our own. And so we thought this would be a great opportunity to allow our listeners out there to kind of contribute by becoming a monthly patron of uh, the Diffuse Congruence podcast. Patreon.com slash Diffuse Congruence. You can find out more about how you can become a patron and and, and what um, different levels of sponsorship and patronship, if you will, uh, gets you little prizes and little opportunities to be a part of the show. So our goal is to continue the momentum we've had over the last uh, five years. It's hard to believe, coming up on five years now. We want to keep that enthusiasm and that energy going as we expand in new and interesting directions. And the only way we can really do that is with your help and your continued not only spiritual support but yes your financial support too so we're really hoping you will join us as we take diffuse congruence into the next leg of its hopefully lengthy journey yeah absolutely and uh if i could just add one final note to what zucky said earlier in terms of what your valuable contribution can do in addition to allowing us to kind of up our production quality and and get better equipment um you know we want to we want to get the word out uh so far again you know going on as many years as we as we've been doing the show it's been exclusively we have relied on essentially word of mouth of our listeners and um you know, uh, that has gotten us this far, and we're, and we're really grateful to that. But I think that with um, a little bit more investment um, into some advertising and promotional uh, uh, endeavors out there, we can get help. We can help spread the word because uh, Zeki and I feel very confident in the fact that all it is is a, it's a matter of people li- listening to the show. I think the content sort of speaks for itself. It's really just about introducing audiences to the show. Please do uh, visit patreon.com slash diffuse congruence. Become a patron today and you can become a monthly patron and uh, it'll really help us in putting out the best podcast and the best diffuse congruence that we can put out there. So that website, once again, is patreon.com slash diffuse congruence. Sign up to be a patron today and you will start to see the impact of your contribution almost immediately. So thank you once again for supporting us for coming up on five years, and we're hoping we can keep that energy and that enthusiasm coming for a long time to come. Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. My name is Zaki Hassan. I'm here with Pervez Ahmed. 
Hey, greetings everyone. Good to be back. It's been a minute, but it's uh, best time as any because now we, we're sitting with uh, two gentlemen that I w uh, that we've been wanting to talk to. Well, actually one gentleman in particular is a returning guest and the other is someone who we, we wanted to have for a minute. So, And, and we're breaking format a little bit. Yes, we, we are. Do something a little off... Uh, I was going to say off-brand. It's not off-brand. No, it's not. It's off-the-beaten off path. There is no brand, per it's, se. That's true. It's off-the-beaten path. There you go. Exactly. Uh, so, first with our returning guest, uh, Micah Anderson is Great back. to be here. It's great to see you Do you, you even guys. remember sitting and recording with us? I do. do? I yeah. do. Yeah. We, we totally had a wonderful do. time my, talking about My brother about. is taking your class, and yeah. he cannot stop talking about yeah. it. Oh, that's meaningful. Every and, week he'll be like, Micah, and I gotta say, Micah said this. Uh, and he'll, well, we have a little added incentive. Our wives are taking the class. That's true. So yeah. you know, put in a good, a nice little good, okay. a good word okay. for us. And, nice, nice. Uh, how, how, yeah. how? Earlier today, my wife was like, "I took Micah's class yesterday. He's making us reassess things in our lives." And then she just looked at me quietly uh -oh. for about fifteen seconds. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, I'm in trouble. I'm sorry, man. So now you know the real reason we're here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Quite a reassessment. There you go. That's right. <laughs> and, and the other voice you're hearing is, of course, Ubaidullah Evans. Alhamdulillah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great honor, great privilege to be. With you guys. Yeah, all the way from Chicago. Uh, yes, we happened to catch him while he was out in the bay. Uh, it's always a pleasure to sit with two fine young gentlemen like Ubey. I'm about Michael. young, but I don't know about fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nor do I know about gentle. <laughs> But uh, man, be, that 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 is, that, that is a category. I think I'm I, I, I'm uh, I, I've, I've earned the title. <laughs> so it, I mean, I don't I don't know where we place on the on the on the sort of biological age spectrum. But I will say that when I when I think of Micah and I think of Abade, I think of my elders in the world of fashion, in the world of sartorial excellence in the oh world God. of oh, uh, in the world Dang, of he's aroma he went there, there. He, he went there. Sartorial, sartorial excellence, excellence. <laughs> mashallah right. and you I thought what? I was just a fop you well know? it's so, funny because you were talking about Dasiniat um, so you know I think if we're talking sartorial excellence or we're talking oud it all kind of fits in. And when you agree, obeyed about when we're talking about tahsiniyat. I mean, yeah. I mean, this this idea uh -huh. of uh, things that are done with the express purpose of being beautiful, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and things that um, come from uh, this idea of excellence of mm -hmm. ihsan. Um, I think you do find those things in just the crafts of artisans and craftspeople. Mm -hmm. Um, that take their craft seriously. Um, and although it's kind of a rare commodity uh, in, the modern, in, the modern in the modern period, you can still find people that uh, appear to make things with a certain pride and uh, there's, a, um, there's an intentionality uh, usually that, that, that goes into uh, certain uh, crafts that you can feel. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. and that's what I would probably refer to as tahsiniyat or like you know genuine embellishments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now uh, it, it's fun, yeah, because I, I, I couldn't agree more. Because when you talk about craftsmanship and taking and having intentionality, even if it's in things that we would consider ritual, uh, like making coffee mm -hmm. or preparing tea, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we still even mm -hmm. in modern times we do have cultures. Where there is a intentionality and mm -hmm. a ritualization mm -hmm. of those things that we like to just do by the by way of pushing a button, for sure. Shame. Ritual gets lost. Ritual gets lost, and ritual is essential. But, well, well I, I, say, on that. For, yeah. I would say ritual not only does it get lost, it gets uh, demonized almost yeah. as yeah. as a, it's used as a pejorative. Yep, that's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I yeah. Well, I know you talk a lot about mindfulness. I mean, if maybe if you could mm. kind of kind of combine those two ideas of, of, of mindfulness and I know like as someone who's taken some of your workshops like mindfulness and eating mindfulness and walking I mean to me that's also yeah. there's intentionality intentionality and about. presence right yeah. it's like can we be present with can we be intentional about the way that we look the way that we act the way that we engage mm -hmm. with ourselves the way that we engage with others mm -hmm. right um, so I think it can relate back to the concept that Bade was talking about, Isan or, or excellence or striving, striving, right, to reach, uh, reach excellence, mm -hmm. which is also a prophetic quality, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, how could we tie in presence into that? I think intentionality I like, mm -hmm. 
right? I think being intentional and being bringing more awareness to what we're what we're doing, how we're carrying ourselves, right? Uh, and that could mean the way that we look, the way that we engage. Uh, you know, there's so many levels. Certainly, and also too, I think with with any kind of ritual, whether you're talking a religious ritual or a social uh, ritual, it involves. Um, it's almost the polar opposite of self-aggrandizement. Hmm. One engages maybe in certain kinds of performance to really heighten the tradition itself. You know, I'm esteeming those that came before me that practiced this particular art or this particular craft. And it's not just about self-expression, which I think is often lost in a conversation about fashion among, you know, we think about fashion and it's purely in a consumptive, uh, it's a consumptive vein is how we think about, you know, fashion. But I think a more um, spiritually nourishing way of thinking about, you know, how you outfit yourself and how you carry yourself and these different rituals in which we engage mm -hmm. is this is about upholding a tradition and it's about honoring the other. Mm. It's about, you know, there's a beautiful hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ told people to wear perfume because the angels like it. Mm. And I think about that often. I think even the simple act of applying oud is not merely so that people say I smell good or so that I leave uh, a good impression and people think of me a particular way but it's really kind of a service to others and it and it and it and it hopefully displays a heightened respect Correct. and regard for them and also a heightened respect and regard for the traditions that produce you know these crafts mm. you know whether you're talking making coffee or oud or clothes or hospitality or you know interior design or art or now, even industrial design it doesn't have to be these products that have built-in obsolescence that are meaningless, that are made for landfills. Now, you can actually have good, solid industrial design, mm -hmm. things that are actually intended um, yeah. not as impersonal pieces of, you know, stuff, but this is something you're supposed to develop a relationship with. That's you know, uh, one of the really interesting sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ, is that he would name his things. That's right. You know, his camel had a name, his rug had a name, yeah. right? He his would comb. name, his yeah. comb had yeah. a name. Right. Even these seemingly, um, you know, um, I guess, uh, you know, utilitarian kind yeah. of uh, yeah, right. objects of, of whatever, he personalized them, which mm. indicated that he had a relationship with them. Interesting. Yeah, and I think yeah. that that is really, I mean, I mean, we're talking about the Prophet, mm -hmm. that's probably the foundation of gratitude. How can you be grateful for something that's just a piece of, it's just a thing, man, it's just a, no, no, but when you, you have a relationship, relationship with something like, no, no, this is my car, I call it by a name, mm -hmm. and if it were to break down, I would mourn it. Mm -hmm. You see, that's, that's a different kind of gratitude, right. but a person that's it's just, you know, it's just a stupid thing, it's just a, you know, whatever, you know, you use it, you, you get rid of it, you buy another one. <laughs> Um, and that is also leading to a certain kind of environmental oh, yeah. degradation, this kind of just the proliferation of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to buy less and buy better, you know, less stuff, right. but better stuff that's stuff. better stuff, stuff that's more lasting, mm -hmm. uh, stuff that we can actually develop a relationship with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we would be um, much better as a as a society and maybe even a species if we adopted you know that kind of um you know uh, approach mm -hmm. you know? and and when you're talking about relationship like being in relationship to thing like that that would be a real easy kind of like intersection with mindfulness as well and like self-presence right because we're we're in relationship to everything we're in mm -hmm. relationship to ourselves mm -hmm. we're in relationship to others right mm -hmm. and can we can we have that same honor with being in relationship with ourselves being in relationship with immortality being in relationship with everything right mm -hmm. or are we doing what denying pushing away it's not right so mindfulness is about moving towards and having a relationship with everything even if it's something that's uncomfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Right. Such as immortality, such as uh, uh, whatever it may be, right? Sure. Grief. Or well, it's, it's interesting you talk about immortality because, it, I mean, and, and we kind of alluded to it at the outset almost jokingly, but 
the class that you are teaching or the one that yeah. Zucky and I yeah. were, were, were referring to is one one year, a to, year live. to live. A year to live. It's a year to live. It's based yeah. on a book. Mm-hmm. Called The Year to Live. Uh-huh. And written by Stephen Levine, who is a teacher who's since passed. Uh, it was the uh, teacher of mine. Uh, um, now, did he write it knowing he was... Did he? Was, no, oh, no, okay, it, was, okay. it was before that. But what he found, he worked a lot in the conscious dying movement in the mm-hmm. 70s, which is when people were, you know, maybe diagnosed with a terminal illness or sick, and they would consciously try to be present for their death, in right? The time, so, oh, God, t- right. tying things up and being in relationships rather than just kind of like, no, 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 no. It's like, yes, okay, now what, right? How can I do this in a way that's um, that's going to be healthy and transformational? So he he was very much involved in that movement in the seventies, um, and then found that many people who were who were involved in this conscious dying movement had such a relationship with their illness that it was transformational and they found that finding out that they had one year to live actually they were they transformed their lives their mm-hmm. relationships because it suddenly made you prioritize things mm-hmm. in a much mm-hmm. different way than you may if, also, if you have this reality like oh i still got another 30 years mm-hmm. or my imaginary life that i'm going to be 80 years old and i'm in my right i'm thinking how much more appreciative does one become knowing that you know the food that i'm eating I mean, this could be the last time that I eat, you know, this food or um, uh, the people that I'm in relationship with. Yep. This could be my last time speaking exactly. to them. Or um, I think those um, small enjoyments hmm. that we often overlook or yeah. uh, treat with disdain because we're not mindful. I imagine with a year to live, you become much more conscious of their significance. You know That's I mean? one of the purposes of it, right? It's right. it's really to try and yeah, to to just try and really prioritize what we want to do. It can be simple things. It's not like I got a year to live, so I'm going to go sell all my stuff and live on a desert island someplace, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, can I the little things, right? Can I show up a little bit more for my family, mm-hmm. for example? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, what am I leaving them with? Legacy, right. of, of me. questions yeah. of legacy, yeah. or yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, it's like, mm-hmm. but it's just small, simple things. It doesn't have to be these huge things. Little moments, like just us, Bade and myself, like connecting today, man. Mm-hmm. Really, really that, meaningful that. and like authentic, absolutely, and like it's yeah. just like, absolutely, we're both being present with each other, and Allah we've been Allah sending Allah each Allah other Allah appreciation, Allah and Allah just Allah like, Allah Allah Allah. what do you want, man? Allah. And like, now we're on the diff- diffuse congruence, which I think is a translation of mutawatir. Hey. Very wow. good. Yeah. Yeah. You're really good. You Which, nailed it. As a, as, as a good disciple. A that's right. <laughs> you know, as only a good disciple of Dr. Jackson would know. Would, would, yeah. would, would, would you would know. know. Would know. Correct. That's, that's right. what you guys intend. Which is an excellent title, by the way. Yeah. I mean, like, Thank I you like for it. saying like that. It. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, you for saying that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> You, I, you definitely deserve a prize because I think you're the first guest that I need yeah, to deal well, with. Yeah, well, I think we're I had to remind Dr. Jackson, <laughs> in fact, so. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true, you did. <laughs> so, Which, you know, so with diffuse yeah. congruence, yeah. it's an interesting idea uh-huh. that um, it's almost the, um, it's this kind of um, confidence in human beings that if everybody agrees that something happened or right. everyone, and it's, impossible for them to conspire and invent this lie that it must mean that that thing really did happen right. and that's a major part of our epistemological it is you know kind of framework that like no that's that's factual if someone says you know you know four more independent chains of people so you know i was there i heard it you know uh it's, it's almost like uh no no that that's that's human beings and their experiences can actually convey absolute truth if those experiences are shared yeah. among a diffuse uh, kind of, you know, congruence of, of, of reports and, and people. That's right. That's uh, right. There's that's a that's diffusion really. of the report and there's a congruity in what is being conveyed. Conveyed. So that means so that it's, it sounds. It's, it's sound. True. Correct. It's true. Which is, you're right. It, it's, it's a confidence in the human enterprise. That's what uh, I'm talking and about. And at the it, same time, it's, it, it, it kind of puts aside sort of being skeptical of the human endeavor. Right. And I think that now, you know, cynicism is in vogue. Well, I was going to say, oh, I mean, yeah. we yeah. live in a time. Yeah. Truth. Truth. We're talking about the truth. truth. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this is, is something I, I, I teach journalism and I tell my students exactly this. Like, look, when you're looking for sourcing, and I use the phrase, it's like you want diffused 
congruence. They're like, what's that? <laughs> so the, <laughs> the tradition continues. But it's the same idea, right? You mm-hmm. want repeatability mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. sources who would have no reason to, to overlap or to, you know, conspire. Uh, to conspire conspire exactly. or collusion is an operative mm-hmm. word. Right. Yes. Yeah, well, and, and that's, I mean, you know, the phrase fake news is, is in vogue these days. And I keep talking about this. I'm like, look, if something is making it into the, uh, you know, uh, respected newspapers, let's say, it got there because they've been able to find uh, uh, repeatability right. from multiple unconnected well, sources. to me it's interesting that Obeid said epistemology because I think, to me, when all is said and done and the dust settles after, the you know, and, and, we, and we finally can welcome in a post-Trump era... <laughs> I think to me Hopefully the biggest not in a, like yeah. a literal sense the dust settles, you know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, post a couple, yeah. atomic dust. Right? There, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. God help us. Um, <laughs> well, but I, the- to me, that one of the biggest victims of of the Trump era yeah. and the era that we live in is this is is, is the idea of mm-hmm. fact and epistemology mm-hmm. and how we know the truths that we hold to be. If I may, well, well, that, well, that's all gone now. I think all, all you have really now is feelings. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not, <laughs> you, know you know what? You're absolutely right. And I'll tell you something. This is not a, a, a symptom of the Trump era. The Trump era is just a representation of something that's been yeah. in the ether for a long that's time. Right. The, that's right. The word Stephen Colbert coined it. Truthiness. Truthiness. That's right. It doesn't have to be right. It just needs to feel right. Mm-hmm. Truthiness comes from your gut. Mm-hmm. That was in the George Bush era. Right, that's right. Mm-hmm. So it's always been there. Yeah, that's right. But we've sort of in, the, and I, I blame uh, this on social media too. Social sure. media has has put all of these varied opinions, some lesser and more valid, on an equal even, on, on an even playing field. I tell I tell my kids all the time. I'm like, if you see a news story from Newsweek. Do you think it's legitimate? Oh, sure, because Newsweek. I'm like, if you see a news story from News Time, do you think that's legitimate? Oh, sure, News Time. I'm like, that's not a thing. That's not a real thing. I just made that up, but you think it's real. <laughs> right? People, yeah. we don't know the difference. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think, you know, much of uh, how we kind of imbibe information, it's really just confirmation bias. It's, it's, it is? You know, I mean, and, and it's, it's easy for us to engineer that because I have, I'm not on social media, but I'm not knocking people that are. Um, but... You can all day listen to people who reflect your views, sensibilities, opinions, experiences, etc. And you end up in just an, an echo chamber. chamber right? mm-hmm. And you begin to believe that as, 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 as kind of representative of truth. Right. When it's, it's a very limited you know, sliver of folks that actually hold that. Oh, you see? Right, uh, yeah. No, that 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 that's an excellent point. That's an it's, excellent. It's point. the 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 cave, you know, the the metaphor of the cave where people, you know, the metaphor of the cave. Right? Yes, yeah, so you just the uh, shadows Yeah, the, the, okay. it's the same yeah. idea, right? Oh, this is what we know, so it must be real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the Matrix. I mean, we're living in. We're living. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah. I mean, we are. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because okay, good. Gets the juice is flowing. Gets the juice is flowing. I mean, I'm you know my 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 style is yeah. yes. similar to Osama's in that yeah. I'm thinking of the material, but a lot of it just comes out yeah, extempor right. you know just extempor- yeah, yeah, yeah. extemporaneously. Free style, free, uh, free form jazz odyssey. There you go, That's man. Right. You know That's what right. I mean. Uh, well, I, you know. I, I teach public speaking, right? And I and we I teach extemporaneous speaking. And I say rehearse. Uh, uh, it's rehearsed spontaneity. Absolutely, that's, that's extemporaneous Absolutely. speaking. Absolutely, I love that. Absolutely, that's I love that. Term. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's you have to, you know, to speak extemporaneously. You just, you yeah. just, you have to prepare, but you're leaving space. Yeah, you you know all the moves. It's just you have room to. You have room to to move around and feel your audience, and and it works well if there's if it's an intimate space. Right. When you're giving a more formal address, that very linear continuity ends up lending the delivery of the content. Yes. You know, like a State of the Union type address, you know. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been trying, kind of floating around, like culture creation, too. That's right. right? right. So I think that's been a, you know, with whether it's fashion or whether it's, you know, we've talked about perfume. I think, like, culture creation in a way that's creating stuff that's, that's uh, portraying beauty, mm-hmm. portraying, right? Intentionally. Uh, intentionalizing, right? So mm-hmm. whether it's through scent, uh, through uh, jewelry, through beautifying ourselves, through, mm-hmm. you know, clothing, whatever it may be, I think it's, for me, it's it's essential. Mm. It's, it's an and essential it, part of expression, right? And personalizing things, I man, you know, if you, one of the, 
my favorite uh, critiques from Marx is when he talks about capitalism, he talks about it being just this system of uh, depersonalization. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's deep. That one vendor has no connection with another vendor. Yeah. The person buying has no connection with the vendor. And if you think about the way we go to grocery stores, yeah, you have no clue of what went into raising the animals Mm-mm. that you're consuming. Mm-hmm. Complete disconnection. Mm-hmm. And fragmented. Fragmented. You have no clue of the people's lives that actually raise these animals. And people right. don't want to know. People and, don't want to know. That's people, the sad. That's part. the sad part. A couple, right. a few episodes ago, uh, episodes ago, we had Dawood Yassin on, right, and he mm-hmm. talks about that, like the farm to plate. That, that there's a whole journey, oh, a whole journey that man. we don't even want. We, we just like you want said, to press don't even want to know. About. They don't want right. to know. You it's want too, it to instantaneously too, get confusing, there. Confusing. It's too difficult. It's much easier to just keep things black and white. Mm. It's clear. You but know, as just soon as we start and, drifting into like, where did the food come from? That's right. How are those tr- chickens treated? They're treated and, right? and that's like, what you know. It's a lot to navigate. And uh, but and also too, I mean, you know, a person told me, man, if you see something being offered. At a criminally low price, know that a corner was cut, mm. and usually the corner that was cut was a human corner. That's right. That's right. Wow. There you go. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And but but I think all of us have been um, we're so acclimated to just trying to find the lowest price right. for anything we just because we're trying to get by. I'm just trying to That's find, right. sure. even though a lot of these low prices on the backs of day laborers. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sweatshops, Sweatshops workers, right. mm-hmm. itinerant farmers being paid nothing by the Dole Company. Mm-hmm. That's right. uh, but, you know, we're just trying to make it. Mm-hmm. And I think more conscientious consumption where it's like, look, I can't pay, you know, premium for everything that is labeled organic. I just don't have it like that. Mm-hmm. But if I can actually have a relationship mm-hmm. with the person that grows my food. Correct. Like Dawood well, talked a, about, just you know, go out there and befriend a farmer, have a connection with a farmer. I mean, you know what I mean? Well, have a relationship, relationship. with yeah. the person that makes your clothes. Like, there you go. Shout out to Usman Aslam, you there know, you what go. Mean? Usman Aslam, Lord, right. you know, and, yeah, and more. You. you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But you know, uh, to have a relationship, right. I think it, it 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 increases empathy. It's almost like you know. I mean, I know this person, so I'm perhaps more willing to pay a little more because I know this person isn't robbing me. These mm-hmm. aren't major corporations yeah, that exactly. are raking in money. Exactly. I'm a small farmer. I'm a, right. I'm a small artist right. and I make a few clothes for a few people, but you know, it's not, right. uh, you know, it's, it's, I might it's, pay you know, one, pr- I, I might pay a price equivalent to getting three slacks for, for a single pair, but at least I, I, I can sleep well at night knowing that it wasn't made in some sweatshop shop. in China Absolutely. or Vietnam. Uh, and I know that, you know, not to mention the, 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 um, the, the what's the word the cosmetics of it it looks better it fits better sure. there's all that right, right, but right. I mean even from an ethical perspective mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. I mean people ask well you know why do you do it I mean it's not just the looks it's 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 to be able to like you said knowing that I have a relationship with the gentleman making it mm-hmm. and I also know that he he imbibes like correct mm-hmm. practices ethical practices in terms mm-hmm. of the people he employs and so, yeah, absolutely, man. And that and that applies to food. That applies to so much Everything, of our. Man. It of increases, a, and you said the important word, empathy. Absolutely, it increases mm-hmm. connection. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we're either mm-hmm. going in one or two directions. We're either going towards each other, connecting, or we're isolating. We're moving away from each other. That's it, right? Mm-hmm. And That's it's it. like, how can we start to just learn how to connect more? Absolutely. So even through fashion, food, all this stuff, okay. mm-hmm. we can learn how to connect through those things. Absolutely, That's right. man. You That's know. Right. When you see them as products of a, of a human endeavor, man, mm. I think sometimes we forget, man, real human beings actually make this stuff, man. That's right. You know, That's you know what I'm saying? This is not just like you press a button on the machine yeah. and it pops out. That's right. These are Instant like real, real people That's with right. families, families and struggles, struggles yep. and, right. you know, and I there think to know. be connected to that, yeah. it increases your, your level of Absolutely. empathy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've, you know, right, like, right, we, we've had Mukhtar on the show. We've been talking about coffee. Oh, about, yeah. You know? right. And it's like, again, it's, it's, it's that idea of, well, yeah, you might pay $9 for a cup of coffee, but guess what? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't mass produced. It wasn't, you know, mm-hmm. I, it, I, he could tell me the history well, of the you, bean. You get the story that comes with that's that what I'm saying. You get the story that, that, that comes with yeah. your suit, and, and then you, and then also too. I mean, it, it encourages you. It encourages you to consume less. Less, you know, because a nine dollar cup of coffee. I'm probably having one every couple of days. 
<laughs> you know, that's not gonna exactly. be my, you know. That's, I'm not drinking that like Dunkin' right. Donuts, that's baby. Right. You know what I mean? or, if, or if you were going to a farm and sacrificing your own animal, right? Exa- exactly. Right? You would be Find your own different. halal hashtag, right. as Dawood Yassin talks about. It's like you're gonna consume less meat. I mean, you know, a friend of mine said, man, you know, one of the most effective diets he ever went on is a person told him, look, you can have anything you want as long as you make it yourself. Mm. He said, when you see, mm. like, if I got to mm. really go cut my tail, make my own fries, I'm probably going to eat French fries much less. Yeah, okay, I got to really mix flour, make my own cake, I'm going to be eating cake that's much right. less. That's right. Wow. You know, right. so part of our even culture of obesity that's is just the convenience with which we can access this meaningless Absolutely. stuff. You know, just right. go pick it up. But if you and actually all the had this, corners that are cut. And all the corners that are cut to make it accessible. Those, to make, make it things. accessible. Last yeah. longer in the packaging, yeah. whatever it may be, right? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, Again, man. So, which, are, which is harmful for ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. man. So, yeah, no, in, in, like, in multitudes of ways because... The, the, all the preservatives and everything make totally. it harmful, and then you're eating more of it because it's easier to get. It's easier to get, harmful. and it's cheaper. Yeah, it's cheaper. Right? Yep. Right. But the cheap comes out expensive, right? That's the that's, that's, that's it. The cheap that's comes out expensive. What, what, what was the documentary like? Like, like the cheap price. What is the the, the price of cheap? Oh, I know. The cost of cheap prices. It was a it was a documentary on Walmart. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, and no, that was man. fascinating. And, and was, you know, and, and you know, Walmart, man. I mean, and I'm not. I mean, I, I've, I'm sure I've supported Walmart probably in the last week. I mean, you know, so I probably went and got something. But I mean, a person told me that they're very intentional about destroying small business where they go. Mm-hmm. You know, the mom and pop stores. They're making sure. Yeah. Crushing. Yeah, that's we're, right. We're crushing. It's we're, built into the business model. Yeah, it's, we're crushing. it's not incidental. It's yeah, a we're, feature, we're, not a bug. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's we're, right. We're, we're going to make sure that these small vendors. Got to move them out. Yeah. You know, what do they, you know, what, what are most people buying from them? Okay, we'll sell it for a cut rate price. That's right. Just to knock them clean out. Just mm. Diapers, milk. Okay, we got that. Get rid of them quick. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. So got, Walmart's not sponsoring quick. our show, right? Not anymore. We've lost what, the potential advertiser. <laughs> no, no, well, well, uh, to, to, but, but I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, corporate power is something that you have to, you, you have to, I mean, there has to be some kind of relationship with it. I mean, mm-hmm. People that accept corporate sponsorships, I'm not like anti them yeah, yeah. or anything like that. I just want to say, if Walmart wants to give me or Alum some money, call me on my yeah, cell. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. 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 Re- reach out for me. We can yeah. make something happen, you know what I mean? Straight up. Well, on that note of reaching out to you, uh, so, Bade, I know this was kind of a teaser for our audiences. We want to have you back uh, for a full episode, inshallah, in the future. And, of course, Definitely. we'd love to have Micah back on the show. Yeah, uh, he's time. always doing some new and exciting things. So, um, Bade, before you leave, uh, mm-hmm. maybe where can people find out more about you and about the work that you do out in Chicago? Yeah, al- alumprogram.org. Yeah. You know, my work... Maybe before we end, we can end on, and we've had Dr. Farid on, we've had doc, doc, Dr. Jackson on numerous times. Mashallah. So, so, I mean, we've talked about the Alam program, but I think mm. from your perspective as the Yeah, I think, you know, ED, Alam, right, right? Well, well, the scholar in residence, scholar I've, been, residence I've, been, right. I've been serving as ED for a while, right. too. Um, it's it's, a, it's a, an organization that focuses on Islamic literacy. Yeah. Um, so we're not, there is no, uh, we're not trying to produce or ulama, right. you know, like scholars of the religion, right. in spite of the fact that the name is Alam. That's right, which is an acronym and not a... Which is an acronym and not a focus. Not a, yeah, uh, we just, right. we, I think we believe that, you know, Muslims working in various fields of endeavor, uh, be it social work or entrepreneurialism or... Uh, business mm-hmm. or you know all of the professions or um, labor uh, if they are empowered by the Islamic tradition uh, they can produce um, a, a culture of, uh, of, of beauty mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and a, a culture that is deep uh, and very profound yeah, yeah. and a culture that vivifies right. um, and so you know we we aspire to um, you know, assist Muslims in, 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 in accessing that kind of literacy. Correct. And I think I mean, consistent with what we've kind of been talking about in terms of being also better informed consumers of things, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to consume the tradition and to consume what's out there, especially in this marketplace of ideas. What I find I mean, remarkable about Alam is that it gives you the wherewithal, it gives you the tools necessary to be able to navigate through what's out there and yeah, be that, better consumers. Yeah, that's, you know, and we, that's we, literacy. we've always focused on kind of being an overarching yeah. kind of organization that wants to give people tools okay. to explore the tradition in whatever ways they want to. Exactly. You know, we're not trying to shepherd people into a very specific kind of group ideology affiliation or, or group ideology group. or it's... 
just tools with which one can access the tradition uh, and be empowered by it. Um, and we, you exactly. know, mashallah, we, we so, believe very uh, um, fervently, yeah. you know, in so our So you went from, you, you had that journey, and we'll talk about it on, on, when we have you on the show, but Inshallah. from alumni, someone who attended the show, yeah, to now to scholar, scholar and residence, scholar mashallah. Residence, yes. I mean, I, I'm an alumni as well, but now I just do a, hmm. a podcast. But anyway. Come um, on, man. <laughs> this is a former <laughs> professor at the University of San Francisco. Please, please, please. This is, you know, perfect. No, no, no. Come on, man. Come on. We know, we, <laughs> we know, we know who you are, yeah, yeah, man. It's you a know, pleasure. He doesn't wear Superman cufflinks for nothing. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Come on, baby. We know who you are. Know who you are, man. Come on, man. Thank you. Don't give us this Clark Kent stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Even if we went, we went all that. That's right. Even Clark Kent doesn't wear Superman. That's companies. right. That's right. So, cool guy. Well, again, thank you. Thank you for not only exactly. saying those nice things about me, but thank you for being on the show, for taking the time. Uh, Micah, uh, always. Thank uh, you. No, always, always. Always. Any, any, any time. Okay. Great all right. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and, and, and you will hear both of our uh, guests back again, inshallah. Inshallah. Looking, looking forward to it. Consider, consider this the on mic commitment. That's right. All right. Yes. There you go. This done. is an on mic commitment. Yeah. Got you. Done and done. And in the Got meantime, you. you can find us on diffusecongruence at gmail.com. You can Just hit us up on Facebook. That's right. Put the lines up. Facebook.com slash diffusecongruence. Thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you on the next episode of Diffuse Congruence. Not in there.